Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Nasara Jasara, a law that would change our lives. Have you guys heard of this thing? So apparently there was a law that was supposed to be enacted that uh, would return us to the gold standard. The law was supposed to take effect uh, several years ago now. And so I happened upon this article and uh, it kind of points towards all these hints that could have, would have, should have brought us back to the gold standard many, many years ago. Now, I know some of you guys might think, okay, this is a little too conspiratorial for me. Uh, so I would suggest maybe don't watch this video if that's not your thing. Although after going over some of this stuff, I did find it quite interesting. Uh, and yes, guys, there is an XRP connection to this as well. So I'm going to get to that in a sec. Uh, first off, I want to go over what this is for those of you guys who just don't know. Uh, this article states, I will start this broadcast with a clip from President Trump about Justice John Roberts. Uh, and so here's the clip here, guys. It's embedded within this article. I'm not going to play the full thing for copyright reasons, but I am going to play a portion of it for you guys here. Then we're going to talk a little bit about it. So this is President Trump on Chief Justice Roberts. I'm going to put in a major complaint because you cannot win if you're us a case in the Ninth Circuit. And I think it's a disgrace. This was an Obama judge. And I'll tell you what, it's not going to happen like this anymore. So Trump is calling Justice Roberts an Obama judge. What does that mean exactly? Well, Roberts uh, rebukes this comment saying we do not have Obama judges or Trump judges, Bush judges or Clinton judges. What we have is an extraordinary group of dedicated judges doing their level best to do equal right to those appearing before them. Well, Donald Trump retorts, Sorry, Chief Justice John Roberts, but you do indeed have Obama judges, and they have a much different point of view than the people who are charged with the safety of our country. This from back in November 2018. So how does this relate to this Nasara Jasara thing? Well, here's what it is. In short, it was formed by farmers that were taken advantage of by the government. They incorporated a section of the 14th Amendment of the Constitution. Uh, this article summarizes Nasara's origins and how it applies to us today. If you guys want to read the article, it is uh, linked in this article here. It's the 14th Amendment. Read it carefully. Section 4 of the Amendment. And uh, so here it is. The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. But neither the United States nor any state shall assume or pay any debt or obligation incurred in aid of insurrection or rebellion against the United States or any claim for the loss or emancipation of any slave, but all such debts, obligations, and claims shall be held illegal and void. So in short, Nasara is forgiveness of credit card, mortgage, and other bank debt due to illegal banking and government activities. It would abolish income tax. It would abolish IRS, creates flat rate, non-essential, new items only sales tax revenue for government. It would increase benefits to senior citizens, returns to constitutional law, establishes new presidential and congressional elections within 120 days after Nasara's announcement, monitors elections and prevents illegal election activities or special interest groups, creates new U.S. Treasury currency, a rainbow currency, backed by gold, silver, and platinum, and precious metals. That is really important, guys. We're going to get to that point in a bit. Returns constitutional law to all our courts and legal matters, initiates new U.S. Treasury bank system in alignment with constitutional law, eliminates the Federal Reserve system, restores financial privacy, retains all judges and attorneys in constitutional law, ceases all aggressive U.S. government military actions worldwide, establishes peace throughout the world, initiates first phase of worldwide prosperity distribution of vast wealth, which has been accumulating for many decades, releases enormous sums of money for humanitarian purposes, and enables the release of new technologies such as alternative energy devices. So it sounds fairly utopian, I would think. Ultimately, though, the powers that be wouldn't want you to have these kinds of freedoms because right now they've got a pretty sweet deal. Have you indebted to your jobs running that hamster wheel to keep paying them taxes so that you could live a mediocre life? Now, guys, before I keep going on, I mean, I don't know how real this is. Uh, I just found it online. I thought it would be interesting to share. I don't know if some of you guys might know more information about this. If you do, put it in the comment section. I did find it interesting, so I thought I'd keep going. 
And so I learned more. One of these links up here uh, links to this document, and uh, it's a PDF, the history and true story of Nisara. And uh, so I'm just going to take it from, where was it here? It was up here. That's right. 19, it enables the release of over 6,000 patents of suppressed technologies that are being withheld from the public under the guise of national security. So we're talking about uh, vaccines, potential cures for deadly diseases. Okay, some of the things including free energy devices, anti-gravity and sonic healing machines as stated in this document. And so when you move down here, another thing I found interesting was when this was supposed to be enacted, September 11th, 2001. So the next step to announce Nasara to the world, but it's not an easy task to do. Many powerful groups have tried to prevent the implementation of Nasara, as you guys can imagine. The Nasara law requires that at least once a year, an effort be made to announce the law to the public. Three current US Supreme Court judges control the committee in charge of Nasara's announcement. These judges have used their overall authority to secretly sabotage Nasara's announcement and this is where Justice Roberts comes in. Uh, in 2001, after much negotiation, the Supreme Court justices ordered the current Congress to pass resolutions approving Nassara. This took place on September 9th, 2001, 18 months after Nassara became law. On September 10th, 2001, George Bush Sr. moved into the White House to steer his son on how to block the announcement. The next day, on September 11th, 2001, at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Alan Greenspan was scheduled scheduled to announce the new U.S. Treasury bank system, debt forgiveness for all U.S. citizens, and abolishment of the IRS is the first part of the public announcements of Nassara. Now, again, I don't know how much I believe that the IRS was just going to be abolished. However, this intrigues me. Just before the announcement at 9 a.m., Bush Sr. ordered the demolition of the World Trade Center to stop the international banking computers on floors one and two in the North Tower from initiating the new U.S. Treasury banking system. Explosives in the World Trade Center were planned by both CIA and Mossad operatives and detonated remotely in Building 7, which was demolished later that day in order to cover up their crime. So implicating the September 11th terrorist attacks within this massive conspiracy. Very, very interesting. Remote pilot technology was used in a flyover event to deliver a payload of explosives into the Pentagon at the exact location of the White Knights in their new Naval Commander Center, who were coordinating activities supporting Nassara's implementation worldwide. With the announcement of Nassara stopped dead in its tracks, George Bush Sr. decapitated any hopes of returning the government back to the people. So this conspiracy theory uh, runs very deep. Um, but you know what? There is something to be said about this. And we got to ask ourselves some important questions. Who benefits from it? Every American citizen over the age of 18. What happens to us? What happens to the world? Well, we would live in wealth and prosperity. Remember when President Trump said to dream big, he meant it. And uh, here's a clip to that effect, guys. I'm not going to play that clip for you. Why can't this law be implemented now while well, dirty cops, crooked politicians, and deep state cabal need to face their justice before any of these benefits go into effect? And we are watching this happen right now. So what this article insinuates, and I, and I agree, I know some of you guys are probably shaking your head thinking to yourself, okay, this is just so far-fetched. I don't know what to think of this. And guys, like I've always said in the past, you know what? Conspiracy theories exist. I don't necessarily believe them 100%, nor do I disbelieve them 100%. I think we can take away certain information from some of these theories and apply them to what's actually going on today. So take it or leave it for as much or as little as you wish. And hang tight, guys, because there is a Ripple and XRP connection here. Is Justice Roberts a Bush-loving scumbag that worked for Bush Jr. to steal the missing $9.1 trillion from the Treasury Department, funds allocated towards the Global Prosperity Funds? Was Bush Jr. a puppet and had to have his daddy move into the White House on September 9th only to prevent Nassara from being announced to instead over 3,000 innocent lives were taken away from a hologram or remote control device on September 11, 2001 with bombs implanted in all the buildings from that day of horror. Hmm. Was Bush Jr. just a de facto president? And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that Cheney movie with um, Christian Bale playing Dick Cheney. Uh, essentially, we kind of got a sense of that Bush Jr.'s presidency. Now, I don't know how accurate it is. Uh, nevertheless, it does kind of point to the fact that he could have just been a puppet throughout his entire presidency. And so this article frames Justice Roberts' uh, relationship with Bush Sr. and kind of paints a very curious picture. 
So what else do we know? Well, uh, they talk about a cabal, and for those of you guys who do not know, the cabal, or a cabal, is a group of people united in some close design, usually to promote their private views or interests in an ideology, state, or other community, often by intrigue and usually unbeknownst to those outside their group. And uh, I just dug up this article. This is just from back in September 2019. What is the cabal and how dark forces control the masses? Uh, so I'm going to give you guys an example here. If there are dark forces or a cabal that control world economies and minds, as well as secret factions with religious organizations, then a lot of strange things begin to make sense. Many believe some covert but influential organization is responsible for globally impactful circumstances or events, and the truth is that people conspire. They gather in small groups and work together to take control. Such meetings have been going on since the beginning of our species, but when the action of secret societies becomes sinister and harmful to others, then perhaps it's time for the populace to wake up, sometimes called the Illuminati or the New World Order, or even the global elite. Cabal refers to secret factions working inside our government, with an agenda for world domination. To become aware of their entrainment, we must empower ourselves with our awareness free from their crafted agendas. Just going to go down here, the cabal and secret societies. Uh, secrecy needs darkness to survive. We may have heard the name, but what is the cabal? If we're unaware of their existence, we are powerless against their manipulation. Secret societies are nothing new from the Illuminati to the Freemasons. They have thrived behind closed doors, teaching countless generations beliefs and knowledge. Secrecy and power are their currency. Like the Hydra, they have many heads, many names, all with the same belief that power and domination is the role of the select few. And guys, you've heard on cryptocurrency channels about the Bilderberg Group. Maybe I don't have to go over that, but just in brief, more than a half century ago in 1954, Daniel Estulin wrote, the most powerful men in the world met for the first time in Oosterbeek, Netherlands to debate the future of the world. From that day forward, right up to the present, they have been meeting every year in secret. They called themselves the Bilderberg Group, which is a membership of world power elites, mostly from America, Canada, and Western Europe. These are mostly high profile individuals who are influential in an array of areas ranging from politics to entertainment and from industry to banking. Uh, well represented are top figures from the Council on Foreign Regulations, the IMF, the World Bank, Trilateral Commission, EU, and powerful central bankers from the Federal Reserve and ECB and the Bank of England. So an interesting connection there, guys, to these world elites, the Bilderberg Group, and so uh, we know why they would be considered in this possible grand scheme that is trying to be played out. And I know you guys have heard of the deep state. Well, President Trump also wants you to know that he knows about them too. Let me play you guys this clip. Secretary of State Pompeo is extremely busy. So if you have any question for him right now, could you do that? Because you know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the State Department or as they call it, the deep state department. You know, my... I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So Look at this. Have any Look at this. Please. Yeah, how about you? Please. Only, only for the yeah, secretary. The exemptions on work, travel, uh, can you define that? Is all work, anyone with a work visa can still cross the border? Can you define yeah, what, like, the, the measures that you're taking? It's a, it's a great question. Uh, we'll, we're working, we, we're very real concerned about H2A visas, in particular agricultural workers that are, need to get across. We're going to make sure that we do everything we can to keep that part of our economic lifeblood working between our two countries. DHS and the State Department will work together. Uh, we want to make sure and keep commerce between Canada, the United States, and Mexico alive, functional, and prepared for the day that this economy bounces back like we expected it will. Okay, so they're looking for the economy to bounce back. Uh, but President Trump obviously picks no bones with the deep state department. He clearly believes it exists. What does he know that we don't know? So let's move on to the deep state. Uh, do you guys know what the deep state is? Well, a month after President Trump took the oath of office, his chief strategist covered a controversial description of what Americans, including the two million career civil servants Trump now leads in the executive branch, could expect from the new president. Every day would be a battle for deconstruction of the administrative state, said Stephen Bannon, the man frequently described as the mastermind behind Trump's nationalist agenda. Bannon no longer works in the White House, but his remarks at the conservative political conference in February continue to reverberate through government. Some interpreted Bannon's comments as a reference to Trump's classic Republican goals of reducing regulations, cutting taxes, and shrinking government. Trump warned of the danger, invisible to some, but familiar to the polls, the steady creep of government bureaucracy that drains the vitality and wealth of the people. Drains the vitality and wealth 
of the people. Could he mean the powers that be, perhaps some people within the Bilderberg group, those higher ups that don't want to be unmasked? Could he suggest them, the ones that are preventing Jasara Nasara to occur? As the Trump era has unfolded, the term deep state has come to mean something sinister to some on the far right. More than just signifying an impersonal, inept bureaucracy, it conjures a secretive Illuminati of bureaucrats determined to sabotage the Trump agenda. Now guys, again, I'm not going to get too much more into this. I will link this lengthy article here if this is something you guys are interested in. Uh, and again, I'm not promoting the fact that this is the truth, nor do I believe that it isn't the truth. You just have to take a look at the facts. You have to take a look at what's in front of you and make a decision for yourself. Now, I kept researching and I saw this on Twitter, this from Santa Surfing. Uh, and this, again, has to do with this whole Jasara Nasara thing linking to a video with regards to that. What is it? It's a law signed by Clinton. Uh, why didn't it get announced? Bush Sr. and the cabal stopped it. Why did Trump feud with Justice Roberts? He was in on stifling the life-changing law. Congress knew all along. And it is a 19-minute video linked here in this tweet if you guys want to watch that. Uh, now, some things... I find interesting. They're talking about returning to the gold standard. And we've heard about this with reference to cryptocurrency and XRP and how this could ultimately change the way the world does business. Well, this from Bretsky, years before 2015, the recent way larger fine India already had four times more gold than Fort Knox in their temples and households in addition to their economic reserves. Now, this is an article here from Bloomberg, India's gold stash dwarfs Fort Knox, Horde, and Modi wants it. I want to just bring you back to this original article because this is important. There was only one problem. The USA did not have enough bullion. So let me backtrack a bit. In order to accomplish this, the United States would have to get their hands on some gold, but they did not have enough. But guess who does? India. And where did Trump recently return from? And Trump worked out a deal with India, buy from us and pay it in gold. And India is a friendly partner for now. And why would a whole nation in India celebrate and welcome President and Melania Trump? There were over 100,000 attendees at this huge welcome party. Never ever has this ever happened in my lifetime for the person writing this. So uh, this is a tweet here, PMO India, electric atmosphere at Motera Stadium as people eagerly wait to welcome President Donald Trump uh, and a photo to that effect, uh, or rather a video here, uh, but I don't wanna lose my place. So I will go back to this. Relevant to POTUS deals now, uh, GSI strikes gold, gold deposits almost five times India's current reserves found in, and then this uh, brings us to another article here on Twitter. Guys, I will just link this in the description, and if you want to click on these, you can, uh, you can definitely do so and do your own research on that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that gold reserves, the President Donald Trump realizes to go back to this gold standard, they need gold, and India is apparently... The country that has it. Well, are they or aren't they? I found another thing interesting here on Google. When I type in here, gold reserves by country, okay, these are the results I get. I'm going to click on this. This is the very first thing that Google allows me to see typing this from a Western country, okay? This is poignant. Uh, the United States, 8,134 tons, making up 76% of their total reserves. Germany, 3,367 tons. Italy, 2,400 approximately. France, 2,400. Russia, 2,200 approximately. We've got China at 1,900. Switzerland at 1,000. Japan, 765. And India, only at 618. Now, the reason I bring this up, India looks like it's far down the list. Again, guys, this is central banks ranked by largest gold holdings. But hang on a second. This article here just said India's gold stash dwarfs Fort Knox hoard and Modi wants it. So this article is suggesting that there is more gold in India than we had presumed. Yet when we look on Google and when we do a simple search for gold reserves across the world, it looks like the United States is number one, bringing India all the way down here to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth spot. So I kept researching and I also found this website here. Now this paints a very, very different picture. This from quarter one, 2000 up until quarter one, 2020. So this is very, very up to date. Now you guys can see here the purple line. I don't know if you can tell those colors, uh, but this top line indicates China. Then the red line, India, Mexico, the Russian Federation and Turkey. And as you guys can see here, as I move throughout the last decade, you can see China is here in number one and India 
is number two, with Mexico in number three and Russia in number four. These are the statistics for the quarterly official gold reserves. But hang on a second, I just did a Google search and it said the United States was number one. Could they be lying to us? Well, it is a possibility. The other thing that we have to remember is President Trump's recent trip to China. Now, it wasn't so recent now. This was done back in March 2020. Uh, and they were talking about gold here, how India has a large quantity of gold. And so how are we going to implement this Jasara Nasara law into effect? Well, with the new gold standard, something that we've been talking about for a while, and President Trump's visit to India was suggesting that he could be making a deal with India with regards to their gold. Now, do they not want us to know that we don't have as much gold as perceived? It is a possibility, uh, especially considering uh, the other two countries that have the most gold, or rather, I mean, if you exclude Mexico, you're looking at China, which uh, clearly the United States isn't on such good terms with and the Russian Federation, two communist countries that probably aren't likely to make a deal with the United States with regards to their gold. India and the United States still on friendly terms. So could this be a major cincher? Well, we've also got more guys, the Ripple and XRP connection uh, with India. So this from March, 2019, another article with regards to Ripple and India, major private Indian bank partners with Ripple for cross-border remittances. Uh, and guys, I don't know if you remember back from 2018, Ripple's VP of product, Ashish Birla, reckons we have 50% of the market in India. So Ripple and XRP, as we've mentioned in former videos, a strong connection with India. India's federal bank, a commercial private bank, has partnered with Ripple to use its network for cross-border remittances. The bank announced the development in a letter on March 28th, 2019. The partnership with Ripple comes as part of a wider initiative to apply new technologies to the bank's remittance network. Also on March 28th, federal bank launched two remittance platforms in the UAE for making payments to India. So there's that. Back in 2018, Ashish Birla suggested that Ripple could be having 50% of the Indian market. The company is also focused on developing solutions for the financial sector and has lately been adding to banks in India to its RippleNet ecosystem again from 2018. We looked early on at India and we looked at the 2 billion people, a huge market, and we decided how do you get 2 billion people onto Ripple? Do we give the currency away to every Indian? That's like 2 billion. Just give it away. Well, the vice president took the opportunity to explain to the panel that implications of Ripple's technology in the future of the Indian market and the world economy at large saying that was one idea but then we realized that if you get the top three banks into India onto Ripple you get 80% of the market share and then we looked at where's the future and so we realized in the next five years one billion people will become banked in India but they'll be banked through their phones so then we started targeting mobile phone providers and telcos and so now he continues I think that in our pipeline we probably have 50% of the market in India and guys that was back from 2018 now Ripple likely has more than 50% uh, as we're seeing major developments in the country of India this another one from June 2020 Ripple touts XRP use in new crypto framework suggested for India so major cryptocurrency firm Ripple released a set of recommendations for Indian lawmakers to legalize cryptocurrency so Ripple working with the government in India to create a possible framework for RippleNet to be utilized in India India's also got the gold. President Trump just had a visit there in early 2020. President Trump also wanting to thwart the deep state and this Nasara Jasara thing seems to keep getting thwarted by what some are calling the deep state. Not only that, guys, and I have to give credit to Darren Moore Jr. here. This is a uh, video that he put out uh, regarding the Rothschild banking plan, regulations happening after the G20 meeting. No such thing as a coincidence, and I will leave this in the description for you guys to watch one, two, five, 20 times if you need to. This is a great video. I give full credit to Darren Moore Jr. on this. Good job, buddy. You're putting out some great stuff. Uh, it premiered on July 22nd, so a couple of weeks ago now, or maybe about a week and a half ago. But uh, I wanted to play this for you. You guys got to remember, Judy Shelton was just nominated on July 21st. And let me show you what Judy Shelton has to say. Would returning to gold standard help the U.S. economy? What, can you talk a little about your thoughts on that? Well, I would say, um, I don't see it so much as returning, but uh, more of a back to the future. What a gold standard stands for is is monetary discipline for its, its own sake. Money is supposed to be a unit of account, and uh, 
a reliable measure and a dependable store of value, uh, it really shouldn't be subject to uh, who's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Money needs to be stable and provide the foundation for productive economic growth. Bringing back the gold standard would be very hard to do, but boy, would it be wonderful. We'd have a standard on which to base our money. Um, I like the idea of a gold standard. I mean, it could be used in a very um, cryptocurrency way. Cryptocurrency way. Cryptocurrency way. Cryptocurrency way. Should we leave it at that? A cryptocurrency way? Judy Shelton, obviously a proponent of the gold standard, obviously a proponent of cryptocurrencies. President Donald Trump, obviously wanting to go back to a gold standard, seeing the benefit in that. Also, President Trump has been very favorable to Judy Shelton being nominated to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors. So guys, this is all tying in quite nicely. At least that's what I see. We also got Martin here on Twitter, Martin Volk. Uh, just wanted to read you this, this from about a month ago. I just watched your latest video. This tweeted out to King Solomon and wanted to share my opinion on the gold moving around. As I am sure you are well aware, a lot of European countries shipped their gold to the U.S. during the Second World War, making sure that Nazis couldn't get their hands on it. Most countries left it there as there was no direct need to get it back. However, I believe they no longer trust the U.S. with their gold and want it back. Interesting perspective. So, you know, the United States claiming they have a lot of gold. Could it be a facade? Could it be that Trump decided to go to India to strike a deal and that the United States actually has way less gold than countries like China and Russia. Was this Judy Shelton nomination a coincidence or not? Remember, she's cryptocurrency friendly and a fan of going back to the gold standard. And will Ripple and XRP have a major part in how this all plays out having close ties with India? Anyway, guys, that's my video on Nasara Jasara. I hope you liked it. If you have anything else you want to share, put it down in the comments. But for now, I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.